Hey guys, welcome to our movie recap. Today we're going to recap the film from the year 2002, titled Resident Evil. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe for more movie recaps. When the film begins, we're introduced to the Umbrella Corporation. On the surface, this entity appears to be a standard corporation engaged in scientific and technological endeavors. However, it quickly becomes evident that their research ventures far from ordinary. The corporation is developing a virus with an evil purpose. They intend to sell this virus to the military. The military's plan to use for this virus is particularly disturbing. They aim to resurrect deceased soldiers as zombies, utilizing them as tools of war. Beneath the streets of Raccoon City lies the Hive, a secret genetic research facility operated by the Umbrella Corporation. A turning point occurs when a thief infiltrates the Hive, intending to steal the genetically engineered T-Virus to sell to the military. However, the thief accidentally shatters a test tube containing the virus. This incident leads to the immediate contamination of the facility through its ventilation system, marking the onset of a grave threat. Now, the employees of the Hive face the dire prospect of exposure to the very virus they've been working on. The Hive is overseen by an advanced artificial intelligence known as the Red Queen. When the Red Queen detects the viral contamination, she swiftly initiates an emergency protocol. Initially, the facility's employees mistake this for a routine fire drill, but they soon realize the true nature of their situation. All exits are sealed, trapping them inside and leaving them vulnerable to the virus. In a drastic move to contain the situation, the Red Queen releases a lethal gas aimed at eliminating anyone she deems infected. Meanwhile, our main character, Alice, awakens in a state of confusion, with no recollection of her identity or location. She stumbles around, seeking clues to her past, and discovers a wedding photograph with a man she fails to recognize. Her exploration is interrupted by a strange noise, prompting her to venture outside, where she encounters Matt. However, their interaction is cut short as an elite military unit abruptly enters, breaking through the windows and detaining Matt. The unit's leader, James, addresses Alice as soldier and demands a report, implying that she may have been an agent. Alice is bewildered, having no memory of such affiliations. The team then uncovers a hidden passage behind a wall, revealing a train. This train is designed for the Hive, where the team plans to journey to neutralize the threat posed by the viral outbreak. Aboard the train, they encounter a locked door, behind which lies an unconscious Spence. Alice, upon seeing Spence, recognizes him as the man from the photograph she found earlier. This encounter triggers a flashback to their wedding day. However, a closer inspection of her wedding ring reveals an inscription, Property of Umbrella Corporation. This unsettling discovery suggests that their marriage might be nothing more than a fabricated operation by the corporation. Once the group arrives at the Hive, Alice, eager for clarity, demands explanations. James reveals that they're all employees of Umbrella Corporation. He further explains that the mansion serves as a covert emergency entrance to the Hive. Alice and Spence, he discloses, are security operatives tasked with guarding this entrance. Their marriage, it turns out, is fake, created solely to maintain the secrecy of the Hive. Alice remembers being in the shower when a hidden panel in the wall opened, releasing a nerve gas that rendered her unconscious. This recollection helps her understand the partial amnesia she's been experiencing. Armed with special tools, the team forces open the emergency door to the Hive, fully aware that the Red Queen is monitoring their every move. James shares that just a few hours earlier, the Red Queen sealed all the doors and eliminated the employees. The corporation has sent their team with the critical mission of deactivating the Red Queen and containing the contamination. While some agents stay with Matt in a secure room, the rest of the team reaches the office outside the Red Queen's chamber. Chad, a tech-savvy member of the group, manages to bypass the defense system, opening a corridor to the chamber. James leads a few agents into the chamber with an electrical charge explosive intended to disable the Red Queen. However, their plan hits a snag when the door suddenly locks again. The Red Queen activates a lethal laser defense system, which begins to systematically eliminate the agents in the corridor, including James. Despite the loss and chaos, Chad successfully disables the defense system once more. Alice steps in to assist Chad, helping him transport the explosive to the chamber. 
With precision, Chad activates the explosive, leading to the immediate shutdown of the Red Queen. Soon after, Matt, Rain, and another agent are alerted by strange noises in the room. Rain decides to investigate and stumbles upon a person who, at first, seems to be a survivor. However, this encounter quickly turns violent as the supposed survivor attacks Rain, biting her hand. JD, another team member, tries to subdue the attacker by shooting at their limbs, but to no avail. It's only when Rain takes a direct shot to the head that the assailant is finally neutralized. In the midst of this chaos, the handcuff keys are accidentally dropped. Matt sees this opportunity to discreetly pick them up. The team barely has time to process this unsettling development, as they're quickly overwhelmed by a new threat. With the doors now open, hordes of zombies, once employees of the facility, begin to swarm out of the offices, aggressively pursuing the agents. The team responds with gunfire, attempting to fend off the onslaught of zombies. However, amidst the chaos, a stray bullet strikes one of the many machines in the room, causing it to explode. This explosion triggers a flashback for Alice. She remembers a meeting with Lisa, an employee of the Umbrella Corporation, during which she had promised to assist Lisa in gaining access to the virus. They had planned to steal and sell it. Now, JD is seized by the horde and dragged away, his fate sealed. Rain cries out in anguish as Chad and Spence hurriedly pull her away, closing the door to block the advancing zombies. Meanwhile, the chaos in the hive awakens another horror. A monstrous creature, a product of the corporation's experiments, breaks free from its containment. In a parallel development, Matt navigates his way through the offices, searching for Lisa's desk. His search is abruptly interrupted when Lisa herself appears, but their reunion is anything but joyful. Matt is horrified to discover that Lisa too has submitted to zombification. As she lunges to attack Matt, Alice intervenes just in time, neutralizing Lisa and saving Matt from a grim fate. A critical moment unfolds when Alice sees Lisa's zombified face, triggering a flashback. She vividly recalls offering to exchange the virus and access codes for a certain price. Amidst this turmoil, Matt reveals a shocking truth. Lisa was his sister, and he isn't a genuine cop. He had used a fake ID to infiltrate the hive. Matt and Lisa were aware of the Umbrella Corporation's illegal viral and genetic research and had intended to expose the company's terrible activities to the press. Lisa's role was to steal a sample of the virus, aided by a contact who would provide her with the access codes. Back to the present, in a desperate bid to find a way out, Alice proposes reactivating the Red Queen, the facility's AI, believing she's the only one who knows the escape route. Chad reluctantly obliges, and upon activation, the Red Queen promptly engages with them. She reveals that the T-Virus can be transmitted through blood, a critical piece of information for the group's survival. Under the threat of being shut down again, the Red Queen discloses a hidden door leading into the maintenance tunnels. As the group ventures through the tunnels, they're suddenly attacked by another horde of zombies. Alice bravely confronts them, while the rest of the group scrambles onto pipes to escape. They carefully navigate across the pipes, trying to find an exit, while the zombies reach for them from below. Rain, Matt, and Spence manage to enter a tunnel safely. However, as Alice and Chad attempted to cross, disaster strikes as the pipe breaks. In a heart-stopping moment, Matt and Spence grasp Alice just in time, pulling her to safety. Tragically, Chad is not as fortunate. After this harrowing ordeal, the diminished group finally reaches the laboratory area, a potential turning point in their desperate bid for survival. A pivotal moment occurs when Alice experiences a rush of memories, leading to a crucial revelation. The scientists had not only created the virus, but also a cure. She confesses to Matt that she knows this because she was planning to steal the virus and was actually Lisa's contact. While searching for the cure in a flooded office, they face disappointment, as all the containers they find are empty. This location also triggers memories in Spence, who recalls his own actions. He had been secretly observing Alice when she spoke to Lisa and learned of her intention to betray Umbrella Corporation. Motivated by this knowledge, Spence had infiltrated the hive with the intent to steal both the virus and the cure. 
It's revealed that he was responsible for breaking a test tube at the beginning of the movie, setting off the chain of events. In the present, a dramatic turn of events unfolds as Spence brandishes a gun threatening the group. He proposes that Alice join him in selling the virus and cure for a profit. Alice, however, flatly refuses his offer, clarifying that her intention was never to profit from the virus, but to crash Umbrella Corporation's plans. Spence, undeterred, exits the lab, locking the group inside. Soon after, the Red Queen makes contact with the group. She reveals that she's already dealt with Spence. Meanwhile, Spence, attempting to escape with the cure, encounters the monstrous creature unleashed earlier. Before he can react, the creature swiftly eliminates him. The Red Queen proposes a grim bargain. She'll provide the code to open the lab door, but only if the group agrees to kill Rain, who's been infected by the virus for too long for the cure to be effective. As the tension escalates with the mutilated monster assaulting the lab door, Alice takes decisive action and destroys the screen used by the Red Queen to communicate with them, while Matt shuts down the Red Queen. However, immediately after that, the monstrous creature they've been evading finally smashes through the glass of the lab. Faced with imminent danger, the group frantically dashes towards the train, their only means of escape. Their escape attempt is soon jeopardized as the monster tears off the outer door of the control room, killing another team member in the process. Matt acts swiftly, closing the inner door, but the monster smashes down the last door to gain entry. In a horrifying twist, the monster traps Alice's leg with its tongue. Matt, in a desperate bid to save her, assaults the monster with a barrage of pipes. Seizing the opportunity, Alice uses a pipe to impale and trap the monster's tongue. As the tension reaches a fever pitch, Rain, who's been infected for too long, transforms into a zombie. She attacks Matt, but he manages to deliver a fatal shot to her head. He then heroically opens a floor hatch, releasing the monster onto the train tracks, where it's engulfed in flames. In the aftermath, a grieving Alice retrieves the box containing the cure, and along with Matt, exits the train, reaching the mansion just as the door seals shut. Their brief break is cut short when a group of Umbrella Corporation scientists arrive. They observe Matt beginning to mutate and swiftly take him away, despite Alice's attempts to intervene. Overwhelmed, Alice is knocked out and subsequently taken to the Raccoon City Hospital for quarantine. Sometime later, Alice awakens on an examination table, entangled in a web of strange medical equipment. She violently frees herself from the wires and escapes the room, only to be confronted with a shocking and grim reality. Raccoon City has descended into an apocalyptic place overrun with zombies. The film concludes with a haunting image of Alice, now alone and determined, preparing herself to navigate and survive in this new dystopian world. And that's all for this recap. Which part did you find most interesting? Let me know in the comments section below. Remember to subscribe to the channel and give us a like on this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next movie recap.